dear learners, to yet another important topic on the course Human Resource Management and this topic is related to training and development. This unit on the topic training and development has been divided into two parts. In the first part of the video, we will be discussing about the concepts, the meaning and the methods of training and development. So training is plays a very important role and is very necessary for all types of employees to perform you know, effectively and confidently. Training enables the employees to know the practical know-hows of the job and it increases their confidence and uh, at their workplace. So when we talk about training and development, training and development are required for improving the quality of the work that I have already discussed at all levels of the management and it is important for the workers in this fast changing environment that we all live in. Training and development is a subsystem of an organization which emphasizes on the improvement of the performance of the employees, of the individuals or of the groups. There are some differences between the training and development. So the major difference uh, between training and development is in respect of the level of employees for whom uh, these training are meant for and the content and the techniques uh, employed to train them. Training is important. It is short term process for utilizing a systematic and organized procedures through which non-managerial personnel uh, acquire technical you know, knowledge, then skills and attitudes. Training allows the workers to know uh, the technical and mechanical skills and operations and it is designed mainly for the non-managerial staffs. So it is uh, for a du short duration period, uh, it is a short duration program and it is for a specific job related purpose only. On the other hand, uh, development program refers to a long term evaluate, you know, educational uh, process utilizing a systematic and organized procedures. Development helps the managerial personnel to understand conceptual and theoretical knowledge. It involves broader education and its purpose is long-term development of managerial staff. In the present global uh, environment, uh, all the managerial personnel are to develop themselves, their knowledge through developmental programs. There are various reasons for which we need training and development. So uh, here I would like to mention some of them. One is uh, in an organization when management thinks that there is a need to improve the performance of the employees, when to set up the benchmark of improvement, so far uh, is the performance of the employees are concerned and to train about the specific job responsibility that they are you know, appointed into and to test the new methodology uh, for increasing the productivity of the employees. Let us now discuss some of the definitions given by various researchers. So according to Jack Hall or Rand, uh, training is the process of transmitting and receiving information related to problem solving. Then uh, according to Matthew Jackson, training is a learning process whereby people learn skills, concepts, attitudes, uh, knowledge to aid in the achievement of goals. And uh, Gary Dessler defined training as it is a process of teaching new employees the basic skills they need to perform their jobs. So these are some of the definitions given by different researchers in the field of human resource management. So we, by now we all know that training is an important component of uh, human resource management uh, and how it is important in the organization. So training is necessary for all types of uh, employees that we have discussed and training enables the employees to know the practical know-hows of the uh, different jobs. So now the main purpose of training is to develop and update skills and knowledge of the employees in order to increase their um, efficiency uh, level at the workplace or at the organization and also to increase their organizational efficiency. However, uh, training must be imparted to employees for the benefits of the organization. Number one, for easy performance. So training makes an employee uh, learn to perform the job in an effective way. Without wasting much time uh, through training, uh, they acquire the required skills and knowledge to do a particular job very quickly. 
for increased productivity. An employee gets an opportunity uh, to update the skills through training. Then to standardization of the procedure. With the help of the training, uh, the best possible method of performing the work uh, can be standardized and taught to all the employees. Then let's supervision. Training to employees reduces constant supervision as the employees become skillful to perform their respective jobs. Then it builds the confidence when the employees are able to perform better by undergoing um, some training in their job, the confidence levels become higher and higher confidence level boosts the morale of the employees and resulting into organizational goals achievement. Then the wastage, there will be less wastage, wastage of any kind uh, will be less if the trained personnel or the employees perform their jobs effectively. Also training enables the employee to uh, you know perform better resulting in increased productivity which directly makes an organization grow and goodwill will be built. So dear learners now let us discuss some of the methods of training. So there are various methods uh, broadly they are divided into uh, two types that is on the job training and another one is the off the job training. So what is on the job training? Under this method of training the principle of learning is by doing is used. Under on the job, under on the job training, uh, one is the on the job training where the newly appointed you know employees is instructed how to perform his or her work. It tries to develop the skills and uh, habits practiced in the organization. All the new employees are helped by giving instruction by the skill trainers. And a large number of training aids and techniques are used such as you know procedures charts then lectures manuals sample problems demonstrations etc then the other on the job training is training center a training center is arranged near the main office of the organization where all the equipments and identical machines used in the factory or the uh, you know outlet are kept and the theoretical uh, training is given in the classroom while the practical work is conducted on the production line. So this type of training is given to the lower level of workers. Then the other is a simulation. It is an extension of the training center and the training work very closely uh, duplicated real job uh, conditions and here an attempt is made to safeguard the valuable materials during the training period. The other one is the demonstration and examples. So in this method of training, the trainee uh, shows how to do a certain work through demonstrations and step by step all the activities are described by the supervisor and the demonstrations are often you know, used in combination with the lectures, pictures, texts, discussions etc. So this, the principle and theory of the job is taught by some other methods uh, in this type of training. Then the apprenticeship. An apprentice uh, is given a program of assignments according to a predetermined schedule which provides, you know, of, uh, which provides for efficient training in trade skills. The period of apprenticeship is determined considering the nature of the job and its performance. Now let us discuss about of the job training method which is also called classroom method. So training on, on the job is not a part of everyday activity. Under this method the location of the training center may be you know uh, organization company classroom and uh, the outside place over the organization and educational institution or associations uh, which are not part of the company office or the organization office. Under this method employees are not attending their you know regular works they are allowed to attend the training center for specific period. The method of training um, here can be, you know, lectures where the employers organize lectures with the help of an, you know, instructor or resource person on a specific topic. Then this uh, method is very much fruitful and useful when all the theoretical problems, concepts, behavioral attitudes have are to be discussed. Then let us discuss about conferences and seminars. So this kind of method of training here, the different organizations hold, hold, uh, hold diff, uh, conferences and seminars on a specific issue and some uh, associations of the employees, uh, you know, 
uh, arrange some conferences with the permission of the employer and they arrange such kind of conferences and all these issues relating to the job performance are discussed in conferences or seminars. Then the third one is the case study. Uh, this is also called case discussion. In this method of, uh, you know, real, it may be hypothetical also, business problems or situation demanding, you know, solution is presented to the group of the individuals, group, a uh, group or the individuals and also the employees uh, and they are to identify the problems present in the case. They are to suggest, you know, various alternatives for solving the uh, given problem in the case and the trainer guides the discussion and the process ensures that no relevant aspects is left out in the discussion and educated time is spent on each aspect in the case. Again, there is role playing. So this method is also called role reversal or we may also call it social drama or psychodrama. So under this method of uh, training, trainees are given some role uh, as they would, you know, in a uh, stage play. So they are not uh, written lines to be said. So they have to come naturally. The dialogues have to come naturally. No rehearsal are given. And the role players have to respond to a situation uh, that is, uh, you know, ever changing or to react uh, to it as they would be in a real situation. It is a method of human interaction which involves, you know, realistic behavior in, uh, in an imaginary or hypothetical situation. And role playing mainly refers to the employee-employer relationships, then hiring, then discussing, uh, discussing over a grievance problem, or conducting a post-appraisal interview, or uh, or a salesman, you know, making presentation on to our customers. So this method is also applicable in the case of management training. The next one is the program instructor. So this method requires two essential elements. Uh, the first one is a step-by-step -step series of bits of knowledge, each building upon what has gone before. And number two, a mechanism for presenting the series and checking on the trainee's knowledge. So dear learners, we have come to the end of the first part of the video on the topic training and development. And thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we will be coming up with different aspects of training and development.